All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Channel. Got an exciting video today, a little bit of an unboxing. And actually I'm looking in this video specifically for you to help me tell me what I forgot. Um, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn together and I need your help. So before we get into all of the learning and the unboxing, um, I wanna say thank you so much for stopping by the channel. Please, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash the like button, ring the notification bell so you can see when we post the next video and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a ton and we we love growing this little Ned Rig Nerd community. Also, if you haven't already, check out the Burley Fishing Podcast. We have a live show streams live on YouTube every single Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, and it also turns conveniently into a podcast. But we'd love to see you in chat. We would love to see you in chat as well. So please come check us out there. So what are we doing in this video today? Well, we are impatiently waiting for spring, which means we're like doing all of the nerd stuff that you do when you're like getting a little bit antsy, which I very much am. We were kind enough to receive a very large box, specifically this box from the good folks at Do It Molds. They were on our show a little while ago. Brennan, uh, huge shout out. Awesome guy, awesome episode, ton of fun. And uh, he and the Do It Molds team were kind enough to hook us up with a big box of, you guessed it, bait making materials. This is not something that Jeff and I have ever done before, not something we've really gotten into, but you know, over the last year or two, we've seen the Do It Molds community uh, grow quite a bit. We've seen, you know, uh, what Debo's on there, you got Fisher with Gramps doing stuff. We've seen a ton of folks using their product, making really cool baits, and we just absolutely we had to get in on the action so um, after the show we were talking with Brennan we we're like dude uh, can you hook us up and he hooked us up with this box right here I'm gonna walk you through what they were kind enough to send us and then I'm gonna show you all the other stuff that I needed to get in order to like use this stuff effectively so between this box this box this box this little bag of stuff and these two things I'm gonna show you every single thing that we have amassed over the past couple of weeks as we get going in our bait making journey which we hope ends with catching tons of big giant fish and heck a whole bunch of small ones too and but no matter what happens you know we're gonna have a ton of fun so one more thing to note before we get started here I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing whatsoever. Yes, I have watched a few YouTube videos. Yes, we've seen some of our fine friends like Debo's Fishing who are like unbelievably experienced uh, do some of this stuff. We have some prior knowledge like how baits are made and that sort of thing, but really at the end of the day, I've never done it. Now, if you've ever taken on a project where you have like no prior experience, it's like you're gonna make four or five trips to Home Depot, right? Like you're gonna have to go to Lowe's at least two or three times before noon. That's just like the way projects go. This is a cool, uh, this is an undertaking for sure, a fun undertaking, but I guarantee you there's some gaps in, in, in the arsenal, so to speak. So please, as I'm going here, as you're seeing things, let me know what I've got wrong, because I guarantee you I'm wrong. So please tell me. I know that a ton of you are making your own baits. I know that a, a whole bunch of you guys, a slew of you guys are super, super experienced. I know this because you send us stuff and we see what you make and it's heckin' awesome. So I know that you're better than me. So please lend me your expertise. Save me from myself as I just go ahead and make tons of mistakes. Please, I'm begging you, right? Uh, but again, Jeff and I are brand new. I'll walk you through what I got. I'll explain why I got it. And then you just tell me what I forgot down in the comments below. Be like, hey Paul, you forgot to get the blah, 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 blah. You need 13 of these. And if you could gently uh, provide me with a link, that would be awesome. I want to use you guys as a resource. Again, save me from myself. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the do it box. I don't know where I'm going to do this from. Do this from. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to start grabbing stuff. I have, the box is open, but I've only looked at like one thing that's in here. <laughs> Caveat, that box weighs almost 40 pounds. Uh, so there's almost 40 pounds of bait making gear in here. So let's, let's get, let's get into the box. Paper, not used for bait making. I'm making that assumption right now, but I probably should save it, I'm guessing, just in case it was. <laughs> All right, so this one should be pretty self-explanatory. I see the word Senko, five inch GY Senko. I'm assuming that means five inch Gary Yamamoto Senko. That's heckin' cool. Let's, let's, let's crack it. Can we, can we unwrap, this is like, this is gonna be like a straight up birthday extravaganza. Like almost all this stuff is wrapped. All right, so we're opening up. This is what your mold is gonna look like. Now again, please, please, please remember, I know nothing, so if I explain this wrong, call me out. I will go ahead and I'll, I'll, I will respond to everything. And maybe I'll have to redo this entire video, I don't know. But the idea here is, I believe, you go ahead and you're injecting your plastic after it's been heated um, into this hole right here, and it's gonna fill all of these cavities right there. And that is going to make you 
for Gary Yamamoto Senkos. Um, this thing is so crisp. Oh my lord. That is heckin' cool. Now, I'm assuming that right here, there's a little slot. You're gonna go ahead and like take a knife or a screwdriver or something, and that's what you're actually gonna use to pry open the mold after you pump the plastic in, because I'm assuming it's going to, oh wow, it does have like a, listen to that. So this little ball right here, oh, sorry, that little ball right there fits into that little hole right there. Listen to this thing close up. So that is like sealed well, shut. I mean, that is shut. Heavy duty hinge here on the back side. Come on, camera, pretend I'm not here. There we go. Heavy duty hinge right there. Again, there's your little slot for opening. This thing is very crisp and clean. Holy smokes. Come on, camera, do me a solid. Very crisp and clean. Holy smokes, this thing is nice. And here's the inside of your mold. Again, that is super duper duper nice. That is gonna make some unbelievable base. But yeah, that is a heckin' nice mold. I mean, it feels like it's unbelievably high quality. And if the quality of the mold speaks to the quality of the baits, I think we're gonna be really happy. So Gary Yamamoto, five inch Senko. I mean, can you go wrong? I mean, seriously, can you go wrong? The answer is no. You cannot go wrong. Yes! So obviously, Brendan was paying, do it, Brendan from Do It, was paying attention uh, during the podcast because the next thing I see in here is, Two points, can you go see that? The next thing in here is 2.7 inch Midwest finesse. For those of you who are not quite as nerdy, that would, that would be a net rig. God, I can't wait. This office is gonna be a disaster by the time I get done with all this paper. <laughs> all right, slightly different mold. All right, so your injection point here is in the middle, not at the end. Still has that little slot for the knife. So still, still super crisp and clean. Beautiful looking mold, heavy duty hinge. Oh yeah, and you're making four. This is like the Z-Man style Midwest finesse. Holy smokes. One, two, three, four. So you're making eight at a crack. Eight Midwest finesse Ned Rig baits. I love it. Heckin' nice. I think that's all for the molds. I might stumble across another one, but I doubt it. So we're looking at Senkos and we're looking at Ned Rigs. Now I will say, just looking at the molds, again, if if quality of the mold is any indication of quality of the bait. These are gonna be awesome. Um, and I'm really kind of thinking that hooking us up with like some basic worms is probably the best place to start. I don't know. I would assume that it takes maybe more feel and a little more experience to do like a really good job of filling out like a craw pattern or something with like a whole bunch of intricate, you know, little appendages and whatnot. So yeah, great place to start. Start me off with the easy stuff. Extra easy if you have it. I'm assuming that's the Senko. <laughs> so yeah, perfect place to start. What else is in this bag? Holy smokes. This seems like the next logical place to be. So we have an eight ounce dual injector. Oh. Now again, my understanding is with the dual injector, this is gonna allow me, if I wanted to, to load two different colors um, inside of this, uh, inside of each one of these injectors. Meaning, as I depress both of the plungers, I could actually have a bait that's like split down the middle, like green pumpkin on the top and then chartreuse on the bottom, if I so chose, if I chose to do so. Holy cow. <sighs> Ooh, there's a staple on the loose in my office for sure. All right, let's see what we're dealing with here. Definitely feels like it's of the same quality as the molds, heckin' nice. Ooh. Oh, I'm learning already. Okay, cool. So I instantly had a question. As, like this thing came assembled like so. And I was like, well, how do you get two different kinds of plastic into the tube? How do you, you know, okay. Yeah, how do you like, you know, get the plastic inside of each one of these tubes? Like how does that happen with this like brick here? So you unscrew this, just a little one turn to the left. And this whole thing comes off. So I'm assuming you hit up your plastic you stick each one of these into like a different cup that's full of, you know, four ounces each of plastic. It's an eight ounce injector. And then you gently suction up all of your plastic. And then you go ahead and put this bad boy on here, lock it in place like so. And then when you get your mold, you go ahead and put this there's a hole right there, right? These are the same size. I'm hoping my camera is, yeah, we're good. 
Uh, you got your hole right here, you got your injector piece, and you can see there's two holes in there, one for each color. You want to put that right on there, like so. Then you depress, and much more slowly and carefully, depress your plastic, and it's going to inject it into the mold, and then make the plastics. So, dang, this thing is rock solid. I mean, just like, just like the molds, um, this thing is super high quality, heavy duty. This thing will outlive me for sure. Super nice. I have a lot to learn, but I'm very intrigued and I cannot wait to make some plastics. This is so sick. This is probably the majority of the cost of everything is, that's in this box. Those two molds and then the injector. That's my assumption. Um, I don't know if there's a parts list in here or not, but I'm gonna take a look, but I would assume that's the majority of the cost. And kind of seems like it should be, honestly. Like of the things that I would want to be high quality, I feel like the mold would be the number one and number two would be the injector. They seem like the most important things. So let's move on to the next largest thing in the box. And that is the plast, whoa, that is dangerous to me. The plastisol, I was like worried this was gonna spill all over me. <laughs> like when you have the ketchup lid and you're not sure that it's on and you like wind back and ketchup goes everywhere. I thought that was gonna happen. So this is the plastisol. So this is the Do It Soft Baits Crystal Clear Plastic Soft. Right on here it says mix thoroughly, not to be taken internally. I'm assuming that means not ingested by me. Noted, keep out of reach of children, use under adult supervision. I wonder who Jeff and I are gonna to get to watch us while we make plastics, I'm not sure. I've heard this a couple of different times. Right on here, it says it already on this side, but it also says it here in bright orange. Um, if you can't see that, I'm not sure. It says mix thoroughly before every use. That does seem like it's a very critical step. So like before you go to um, heat things up, I'm assuming there's like some stuff that settles down here at the bottom and you need to have a really good um, homogenous equal mixture uh, before you go ahead and heat this up and try and um, put it into a mold. Um, so yeah, that seems critical. I mean, they put it on there twice, noted. Warmest regards. So yeah, whole bunch of plastisol. I have no clue what this costs. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna direct you guys to the Do It site. I'll put some links for some of this critical materials down here below, but this does seem very critical and something that you cannot make, make baits without. This is sort of like your base plastic, plastisol. Um, and it was the next biggest thing in here. So again, I'm assuming this is critical. I've got a bunch of it. So I will, I'll let you know how many plastics that this actually makes. Should probably keep track. I have a notebook for this whole thing because I'm gonna nerd out when we do this. I'm like keep track of all of my like, I don't know, formulas if you wanna call them. How much of this, how much of that, how long did I heat it? Um, and then how many baits I actually netted out. So I will add it all up at the end and we'll see how many baits we can make with one of these jugs. What's the next biggest thing in here? Oh, Essential Series Plastisol, one quart. I do not know the difference, sorry. Do it guys, I'm not really doing any favors here. We're gonna figure that out. Same instructions, <clears throat> a lot less of it. So I'm assuming this is like more expensive, maybe a nicer plastisol. Mix thoroughly, not to be taken internally. Adult supervision, again, not sure who is gonna be watching Jeff and I, cause we're a couple of dorks, but there's your essential series, one quart of it. Another thing for me to put in my notebook to take, uh, take into account, we'll have to do like a comparison. I can actually already see this stuff separating. Like this has obviously been sitting in my office for maybe a week or two, and I can actually see it's super clear up here and it gets like really milky down here. So yeah, mix well, seems like a good tip. Oh. All right, next we've got colorants. So I'm gonna open a bunch of these up and I'll just rip you through them. Let me show these lids around. I'm like freaking out with these lids. Oh. What? These are sick. Dang. God dang, I love these guys. They thought of everything. All right, let's look at some of these colors. So right off the bat, um, you got your X2 version in the black and the white. Check them out. Um, again, I have no idea how long this is gonna last. So if you guys know, leave it in the comments. You know, I don't know how many like batches uh, this is gonna make. You know, I'm assuming it's up to you, like how much you add to the plastisol. Um, you know, for each batch, and I'm sure it's gonna make like a more clear, more less, you know, more uh, less or more opaque, you know, like white, right? Like how how white does it need to be? Like a whole bunch of it, it's super duper, not see-through white. You add a little bit of it, it's more like an opaque, right? Um, same thing with the black. So I have no idea how long this would last, but man, these bottles, I cannot see a thing. Um, I'm really interested to, 
I'm really interested to go for these. So black and white. Then we've got some basics. Next, we've got a watermelon brown and a green pumpkin green. You gotta have them. I mean, these are like base colors, right? Like uh, I can't make like a gray or like a, you know, like a silver or I can't, I can't do obviously green pumpkin watermelon. You gotta have these as a baseline. So, um, Kudos to do it for hooking up with just like the stuff you actually need. Oh, now we're getting excited. Next up, we have the motor oil. I'm gonna be honest, this is the one I'm most excited for. I saw Debo, Debo's Fishing, if you haven't seen Debo's Fishing, like do better with the internet. Um, I saw Debo make some baits with this motor oil and this was immediately on my list when I saw how his baits turned out. This for me, I, I can tell you right now, just. I know that I'm gonna use this a ton and I'm, I'm actively seeking out baits um, that make this motor oil. It's kind of like a light caramel type of color motor oil. If you've ever seen, you know, some like oil you would put in a, you know, your vehicle, that's exactly what it looks like. And I just think this is for clear water, like in, the, in, the, in anything in a river, I think this is just gonna crush. Um, and then, you know, dude, come on. You know we got the June bug rolling. Like you, you, this is a, for Jeff and I. This is a must-have. It's a color I'm always gravitating towards, and works in a ton of different situations. Just gotta have it. So heck yes. And then for Jeff and I, come on. If you don't have chartreuse, really, was there any use in the order? I don't think so. And then you've got your fluoro. Come on, camera. Do it thing. There you go. Fluoro green chartreuse. On the website, this thing looked absolutely alien. So, and it looks alien right here. So I, I, I can't wait to crack this one open and do some of these combos. I'm thinking like a June bug with some of these is gonna be just like bonkers. I also don't know, like, I'm assuming that like if I mix like two or three of these colorants into like one of the bases that I can like somehow make some cool combos. Like I'm, 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 I'm hoping I can go like absolutely mad scientists and mix like, I don't know, motor oil with, I don't know, something else like black and I can come up with like a really cool, you know, wacky color. Like that's what I'm hoping to mess with. I have no idea if that's possible. I don't know if I shouldn't be doing that. Am I going to blow up in my garage? I don't know, but that's what I'm looking to find out. So that was your colorants. Well, how many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors. Oh, I see two more bottles. This one I am not going to open unless I'm in my garage. This is the hog sauce, upper hand sense. Add a few drops as needed. Also keep out of reach of children. Hog sauce. So when you crack open your baits and they are juicier than juicy, I'm assuming that is because of the, can you see it? Probably not, hog sauce. I'm not gonna open this one either. This one is pure garlic. So I'm gonna go ahead and for the safety of my office, not open this one up. Come on, pure garlic. There it is right there. Um, same instructions. I'm probably gonna add this to everything. I'll be honest. This is probably going in every single batch that I make. Ooh, next up we've got like glitters and things, flex and stuff. They bubble wrap this one, safety first. Didn't want this one breaking, noted, warmest regards. Probably gonna leave it in here. So we got the hollow silver. Can I get you hollow silver? Look at that. Again, this is just seems obvious. Now, when we were talking to the guys, um, this the size here, as you can see written on the bottle, if you can, uh, is 0 0.04, and it's a hexagon shape. I'm assuming, yeah, a hexagon shape. So five shot, five, six, six sided, <laughs> six sided flake. Oh, and then there's a whole box of all oh, glitters and flakes. Here we go. Oh yes, they went with the jumbo on the copper. Like I said. They were paying attention. They knew what we were looking for. Maybe this is the only size. I don't know. But then with the jumbo size on the copper, I plan on using this in heckin' everything. Copper is just one of those things that it seems to set, like just set baits off, especially in the river for us. Anything with a copper flake that's got it included, added, that's the only flake, just seems to do better. So I plan on using this one a heck ton. And it's the biggest one. Talk to me. Ooh, and they do have a .008 size in the copper. Dude, they were like reading my mind from the future. So you get this like really tiny hexagon. This thing is, these are micro. You're probably not gonna be able to see the difference. I don't know, maybe you can. Heckin micro um, compared to these things like, it's double. I mean, these things like a jumbo com comparison. So that's awesome. Dude, Brennan, thank you for just like knowing the things that I didn't know, reading future me's mind and giving us a couple of different sizes. That's so sick. And they did it with all of them. God, you guys are the best. So we got the fire red. And again, this is the 0 .04 size. Look at that. 
that is going to be gorgeous. And this is something I don't see enough of. I don't see a ton of red and everything, but again, it's a color I gravitate towards, gravitate towards quite a bit and I want to use in a lot of baits. One specifically that I don't have enough of and I don't see enough of is black and red. Black and red. I have black colorant. I have red flake. Here we go. Oh, and then they've got the, the tiny size in the fire red. So there is the, I think it's 0 0.008. So a micro version of that flake. Mm, I would like to mix both sizes into the same bait. I think that will look heckin' cool. Fire red. Then we got the same thing in, oh, 0 0.015 oh, in purple. Dang, this is light purple. This color is heckin' juicy. I'm loving the look of this. This will look good in anything, period, the end. This will look good in a smoothie. <laughs> Oh Lord, yes. And here's the 0 0.04 size. So there's that bigger size and that light purple. Booyah, there you go. God dang. I'll start putting that in my breakfast. And then you get the black flake in the 0 0.04 in black. Looking great, dark. It's like a midnight black, freaking perfect. Love it. And then we've got the Canadian blue. Now I do remember this was one of Brennan's favorites. He mentioned that he uses this all over the place. Jigs, plastics, everything in between. And this is like a gorgeous royal blue. It really is fantastic looking color. And then we got the navy. So a little bit of an offset. I'm loving it. So you get two different versions there of the blue. Dude, a man. All right, I'm gonna pack these back up. So that's one, two, three, four, five six seven oh that one's right a little seven eight nine nine plus the big dog different glitter so nine different glitters eight different colorants the hog sauce and the garlic dude that's if that's not enough to get you started I, what are you even doing my man what are you doing there's gonna be glitter everywhere. Even if I don't mess up, there's going to be glitter everywhere. This office is a disaster. There's a staple somewhere over here and there's glitter everywhere. And we're only, well, we're two thirds of the way done with this box. No plastic spilt yet. Knocked on the workbench. Looks like we got some lids. See, this is the stuff that I like wouldn't even know to order. I'm assuming, yeah. So I'm assuming this goes on top of your colorant. Come on, you dude, my guy. There you go. So these are some lids. Um, I'm assuming that these are going on top of your colorants, just like so. Boop, boop, beep, boop, bop, boop. So you can do like X amount of drops. Again, I'm making the assumption you don't need like a ton of material to do like a color with these. So um, this is gonna let me, um, you know, give myself the right amount, measure out, and, and make sure that I'm staying consistent without making a gigantic mess. Um, never would have thought to do that. So. Again, thank you for reading Future Me's Mind. This was huge. Like way bigger than it seems too. Like this is like one of those things that you like have to have that I never would have ordered. They should have like an alert on the website. Like you didn't order this, it's critical. <laughs> what the heck is this? Well, that bubble wrap something, a little mystery gift. <gasps> yeah! It says Paul's personal stash. Some copper glitter just for me? Oh my God, I am literally tickled pink. This is the best, but this is like the best thing I've opened since Christmas, maybe better. Brennan, do it, I'm gonna owe you guys, like period, the end. This is just unbelievable. They also hooked it up with two bags. Now this may seem silly. I'm making the assumption that these are bags for holding the baits that you make. So I'm just gonna get one for the Senkos that I can make and one for all of the 2.75 inch Midwest finesse Ned rigs that I could you know, possibly make. This is another one of those things, I, guys, I actually did think of this one. It wasn't until way after, like I had ordered 90% of this. I think the second to last thing I ordered was a whole bunch of bags. So I'll go ahead and skip for you. So I actually did place an order for bags. I think I spent like $8. I got, how many of these? Apply more, four by six. I got a hundred of these bags. They look like this. They've got the same type of zippy on top. These are pretty standard Amazon order. Um, but I was like, what size bag do I want? Eh, I'm not sure what would hold most of the plastics that I'm gonna make a four by six. So theirs are a little bit bigger, you know, touche, bulk bag, hooked it up. But I, did, I didn't mess it up. I remember that. So good job, me. You guys are rude. They went ahead and gave us like five, six catalogs. Um, 
you probably anticipated do it, me giving these to other people. You know that one of these is gonna end up on my desk and I'm just gonna be like trying to do my regular day job work thing and I'm just gonna end up ordering more molds. So, um, touche. Touche do it, touche. All right, so that was everything that was in the do it box. You got eight different colorants. You got the plastisol, two different types. You got the dual injector, heckin' awesome. You get the hog sauce, you got the garlic scent. You got the two different molds, the Gary Yamamoto eight inch, beautiful. Then you get the 2.7 inch Midwest finesse, basically your Ned rig. Um, what else was in that box? You had bags, you had all the, all of the glitter, plus the secret stash just for me, um, and everything else in between. So what a heckin' unbelievably awesome starter kit. I am so excited to light this one up. But now, as I very unpolitely move all this trash, you gotta think like, that seems like everything you might need, but we are missing some very key things here. You gotta like outfit the laboratory just a little bit more to get things done. So here is what I added, Here's here, literally here, is what I bought after the fact. All right, this may be the most obvious, but it is the biggest box. I bought a microwave. So I did buy a microwave. Now, I did buy a new one. I thought about buying a used one because really, you know, I'm just gonna be making baits. Um, and, but you know, and it, my soul, I'm like a hundred year old man and all I wanna do is get the best deal and I don't wanna spend money that I don't have to spend. But honestly, I just didn't have the time. I didn't wanna like go on Facebook Marketplace and like go haggle with someone for five bucks, you know, over a microwave. But, so I did just buy one. So I just bought the cheapest one I could find on Amazon, but I did make sure that it was a thousand watts. Um, I had heard this in a couple different places. Debo mentioned it and some other folks had as well. Like, it just does a better job of heating up the baits faster um, and it, it is nice and consistent. This is a Black & Decker microwave. Um, <laughs> It has an LED display, <laughs> six programmable settings that I will never use, and it has a kitchen timer, fortunately. So basically, 1.1 cubic foot microwave oven, 1,000 watts. Yes, they make bigger, yes, they make smaller. I'm sure you can get away with like a seven or a nine, uh, but this just made sense. Um, it was not that much more to upgrade. Got it on Amazon, so I didn't have to wait, didn't have to haggle, I just paid and it showed up. So that's the microwave. <laughs> Also, I don't know if anybody notice, knows this or not. Can you keep a microwave like outside in the cold year round, like sub-zero temps? Is it gonna like hurt the microwave? I really don't help. I really hope I don't have to bring this in every single year. Planning on doing almost all of this in my garage. Granted, in the summertime, but like I probably won't be able to do this in the wintertime, which would be super sad because my basement's finished and I don't want to like have the fumes down there with my kids. So I don't know, I'm pretty much a garage operation. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. Let me know in the comments. Have you guys left a microwave outside for like year round in the Midwest, like Michigan, Iowa area, anybody? Does, does it survive? Do I need to take it inside? Let me know. Now we did, the last thing I bought, and this was an afterthought, which shows how ignorant and silly I am and how I'm a child. Um, I did buy some PPE. So I went with this 3M, I'll just show it to you. I don't know what model this is. The 6503QL49492. That's the one I bought. And this basically is a respirator. So there's a lot of like random stuff in there. Um, but basically this is what's going to protect me from the fumes when I heat up the plastics. Fits over your mouth just like this, goes over the thing here, goes this back here. Um, and then you're gonna plug in, you're gonna plug in some right here and here, you're gonna plug in some, I don't know what you wanna call them, filters, right? To filter the air that you're breathing. I've seen the folks who know what they're doing use these. If they know what they're doing and they're staying safe, I'm gonna attempt to do the same thing. As with all of the instructions that I provide you, please, please, please stay safe. Protect your eyes, nose, ears, and mouth at all times. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure that you got some old sweatshirts on. I'm this this plastic is gonna be piping hot when it comes out of the, the microwave, hundreds of degrees, and I don't want you getting that on yourself and burning yourself. So please, 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 be, be, be as safe as you possibly can. Better safe than sorry, that's a real saying, and you should say it, and believe it, and think it. So we do have two of those, got one for Jeff, got one for me. So those are in the box. Then I bought the filters that go with it. So I bought, well, you probably can't see those. I bought the filters that go with it. Amazon made it really easy, like right below, they were like, hey, you can also buy this you know, as they do. And they were like, this will fit the thing. And I was like, perfect. So these ones are multi-gas slash vapor P100 filters. Again, if I got the wrong filter or the wrong type of <clears throat> uh, PPE, definitely let me know that. I don't wanna bring anything I shouldn't. That would not be ideal. So comments, please let me know. I think I got it right, but I'm not sure. This one comes with, I think, four. And then I got two of those, so I have eight of those. 
Four for Jeff, four for me. I also got myself a infrared thermometer. Um, this one reads from 58 degrees to 1,000 degrees. Um, it looks like it's got a nice grippy grip. It's got an LCD display right here on the back, which I think they all do. I mean, like, do they not? Um, yeah, so the deal is I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill up some cups with some plastic that I've already mixed very well and very carefully. Um, and then I'm gonna heat up that plastic, that plastisol. I'm gonna need to heat it to a very specific temperature, which off the top of my head I do not know, which again shows my complete and utter lack of knowledge and total ignorance. <clears throat> but then I need to make sure that I get it to a very specific temperature range. And the only way to do that, the easiest way to do that, not the only way, you can, I'm, sh I'm sure use a regular thermometer, but the fastest, easy, and most efficient way, my, in my opinion, that I know, again, nothing, is to use one of these. I wasn't sure if you needed a very specific type. Obviously, this is only taking surface temps. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really hoping this is gonna do the job. This is the Etec City, Etec City something from Amazon. Um, again, like 25 something dollars, not super expensive. Um, and I'm hoping this is gonna do the job. Again, if I have the wrong type of thermometer, please let me know, because I do not wanna be like making mistakes and not even know about it. This seems like, this was actually the thing I kind of stressed about <clears throat> maybe the most, because I was worried that if I didn't get one that was quality enough or that was gonna do like the right type of temperature measurement, that I would be like, inadvertently making mistakes, thinking that I was like not making mistakes, right? Like checking the temperature, getting a wrong reading, but assuming I got the right reading, and then just like having just garbage in, garbage out the whole time, right? Like every time it was like, oh, that was not hot enough, or that was way too hot and nothing worked. I'm hoping this works. So again, comments, let me know. Did I screw this up? Please, I hope not. I hate returns. Oh, this is hilarious. I bought some, yeah, you're gonna laugh when you guys see this. I bought some super cheap stainless steel knives. Why did I buy cheap stainless steel knives? Well, you need something to mix with. I'm assuming you can't use wood. That just seems like a mistake. Like it's a mistake waiting to happen. Just stuff intermingling and getting into the wood. This seemed like the easiest way. This was like a 10 or a, I don't know. This is a six pack. Probably should have gotten two. But I need to be able to mix the plastisol, um, you know, when you're adding colorants and glitter and all that. And this seemed like a really easy way to do it. I've seen a bunch of other people use these. Again, if I'm making a mistake, let me know. But these are cheap. These are like six dollars, seven dollars. So, um, but some stir sticks that I can use exclusively for this, and not for like pizza or something. Do you use knives for pizza? Who uses knives for pizza? I don't know. Like steak? No, not steak. What do you use a knife? Butter. I'm gonna use those for not toast. Not toast. <clears throat> I also got some stainless steel measuring spoons. I was actually thinking, I got smaller ones. These are like baking size. They just get to shoot everywhere. Ow! So from one eighth of a teaspoon all the way up to probably a, t a tablespoon. There you go. My idea with these, and I wasn't sure if this was gonna be necessary or not, but I wanted to at least somewhat be able to like measure the amount of like glitter or you know whatever that I yeah really just like glitter um, and things of that nature that I'm like mixing into the plastics. Again, I'm gonna have a notebook when I do this. <clears throat> I'm gonna like tabulate and keep track of my recipes as I go. All right, and last but not least, I got some measuring cups. So I have these, I bought the big dogs right off the bat. I really honestly have no clue why. Maybe I had like seen what other pe what I thought other people were using. You probably can't hear anything, you're just hearing bubble wrap. I'm trying not to wake anybody up, everyone is asleep. So we got two of the two cup initially, and I was like, ooh, look at me, I'm smart. This will make like a whole bunch of plastic, look at me go. Um, I read somewhere that this was dumb and that this is actually not gonna heat up very well and take a long time and maybe even be like more than I need. So I ended up buying two of the one cup. I read somewhere and heard somewhere that the one cup is the way to go um, in terms of filling up, um, in terms of just like general heating and being super efficient. So I got two of the one cups. They're, I mean, obviously these are Anchor brand. I actually have these exact same ones, so they're not like Pyrex or whatever, but these should be great. They're microwave safe. Um, they're everything safe. They're like tempered to be, you know, utilized for super high heats. I'm really hoping none of the, neither of these shatter in my hands at any point. Um, but yeah, the, the eight ounce, is that right? Eight ounce? Ha! The injector is eight ounces and this is eight ounces. So that tells me I am onto something. Now, one thing I wanted to see that I was curious about and had not checked is how the injector is actually gonna fit into this cup, especially like two of them side by side. So I'll take this little piece off, just like I showed you earlier. So let's see, so like I'm gonna assume this is gonna be like flat on some sort of like table or workbench. I'm gonna put this in like so, and it is gonna hit the bottom. I was a little bit worried that 
this may or may not be able to hit the bottom. And let's double check. Can I get two right next to each other? Yeah, so I just double checked. This will actually go into two cups, no problem, and hit the bottom for both of them. So that solves a problem that I had in my head. It's just like shower thoughts. Like, oh, maybe that'll be an issue. So that's not gonna be a problem. So that's great. All right, you guys. So that is everything that I purchased for this endeavor, for this enterprise. The way I see this going in my mind, I envision myself in my PPE with a pair of gloves, with an old dirty sweater, an old pair of pants, and I have an idea in my mind of what I wanna make, right? I don't know the recipe, but I have like, I know the color, I know the glitters and you know, whatever that I wanna use. So I'm assuming what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my two, you know, one cup cups or my one one cup cup or whatever, fill them with plastisol that I'm going to mix using my knives, um, mix very well uh, inside those cups. I'm going to then heat them up, heat the plastisol so that it's like all clear and it's the right consistency. I'm gonna measure it and make sure it's the right temperature. And then I'm going to add in my glitter and my colorants. I'm going to very gently, without putting bubbles in it, stir that up so that it's homogeneously mixed. Then I'm going to take my injector. I'm going to suck up all that stuff. I'm going to insert the injector into the mold very carefully at the right speed, <laughs> inject um, all the plastic into the mold. And then I'm going to take that mold. I'm going to put clamps on it, clamp it down, and then wait for it to cool. I have no idea how long that will take, um, but I'll just wait until that is done. Then I will take a knife or something, use that little slot in the mold to crack it open, open it up, pull my plastics out, snip off all of the you know excess, and then I'm gonna have this like amazing bait that's gonna catch me my PB the next time I go out on the first cast. That's how I see this going. Um, the reality of the situation is I'm sure there are 68 billion things that I don't know about that are gonna cause problems for me. Like I have done enough endeavors, adventures, um, projects to know that I'm going to screw something up, that this is gonna be an issue that I don't know about. So please, in the comments below, tell me all of those issues now or as many of them as you foresee being an issue for me or potentially being an issue for Jeff and I as we do this. I know I'm gonna be wrong, I'm really excited to be wrong, I'm really excited to make a bunch of mistakes, learn from them, and then eventually get pretty good at this hopefully, or at least not awful at it. That would be great. So that is the video that we have for you. Thank you so much for checking this one out. Thank you for going along this journey with us. Please continue, please feel free to continue to go on this journey. We are going to eventually make some baits here shortly. Um, we're gonna make some baits. We're gonna try and make some awful baits. We're gonna try and make some awesome baits. We're gonna fish all of them. I'm definitely gonna need to get some more molds. We may get in our, ourselves into some jigs later on, but for now, I'm just trying to learn. So my goal will be to just make one successful batch of plastics that turns out the way, you know, not terribly. That would be the goal. So please follow us along. Again, if you haven't already, subscribe button, notification bell, like button, all that stuff, and then leave your comments. I, I look at every single one of these and I respond to every single one. I will continue to do that for as long as I possibly can. Jeff and I both do, so please do that. And then again, check us out Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern for the Burley Fishing Podcast slash YouTube live stream. Uh, we go live every single every single week on Thursday night. It is a ton of fun. We have guests from all over the industry. We have guest influencers um, who are people who are making content, and it is a ton of fun, and we love seeing you guys there in chat. Please come hang out with us, Ned Rig Nerds. And with that, we will catch you out in the garage making some baits and also hopefully on the water here pretty soon.